it's almost weird. It's like we have this weird, like anti safe use, like crowd, like coming against us. It's like, you're, you're promoting, like using too little of shit. Like you need to use way more. It's like, we've never said otherwise. We've never said you built it on 120. Like, I'm sure you would, you know, reinforce that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and just like in this, in the realm of training, it takes about One thing I see that's really taken out of context that we both have touched on is what it takes to maintain a physique is a lot different than what it takes to build an elite physique, especially in IFBB pro. So like when people hear you say you use 120 milligrams or we talk about, you know, the conservative dosing for some reason, a, there's a pocket of the internet that thinks we're like advising that you need to only take like 150 to 200 to 300 milligrams to become like you an IFBB pro. I'm like, it's no, like this is what he takes to maintain what he has now. It's pharmaceutical grade testosterone, 120 milligrams. This is his blood work. This sustains his physique, but he didn't build it off this. If you took 120 milligrams your entire career, you would not have ended up where you're at. But for some reason, they like can't wrap their head around it and they'll be like, it's almost weird. It's like we have this weird, like anti safe use, like crowd, like coming against us. It's like you're, you're promoting like using too little of shit. Like you need to use way more. It's like we've never said otherwise. We've never said you built it on. 120 like i'm sure you would you know reinforce that exactly yeah and and just like in this in the realm of training it takes about one third the work to maintain a uh, strength or the size that you have as it took yeah. to get there so the yeah. same thing with drugs it doesn't take nearly as much to to maintain and i haven't maintained i'm smaller like I'm, I'm a lot smaller than i was but they don't realize that they don't i don't think they've seen like when i was actually a bigger bodybuilder but mm -hmm. yeah it takes a lot less drugs to maintain your physique a lot less training so even though i'm only training with weights four days a week I sure as hell trained a lot more than that to get my strength and size up to where it was. So even though I've toned it back lately, I'm still maintaining a lot of what I have because that's all I need to do to maintain this, which is a lot smaller. Like I fully believe like, for example, Chris Bumstead could go 100% natural and he'd still be in the Olympia. He wouldn't win, but he'd be in the Olympia because his genetics are that good and his structure is that good that even though he might lose whatever, 20 pounds, whatever it would be, it would still be better than most people have. Mm hmm yeah, what is your split now, by the way, to maintain like what you have? You said four days a week. Like I'm assuming yeah, you're trying to I be do as two... time efficient as possible when you're in there. It's like I, I go back and forth. So like say it's the chest and back, I'll do a set of chest and then I'll rest a minute or two and then do a set of back. So I'm going back and forth. So I've divided my body into two separate body parts. So like I'll do like legs, biceps, shoulders, and calves on one day and then everything else the other day. And so it's kind of like I'm in the gym. I, I have to train my entire body at least twice every set seven to eight days. That's the goal. So sometimes I only go four days out of, out of eight. So like every other day, or I'll do like two on one off and back and forth, but I'm also bike riding like six days on top of that. And with several of those being races, like hard, like in the leg workouts on the bike are harder than the leg workouts in the gym. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do, but what I've done is I've toned back my leg training to about two thirds of what I would do. So because of the bike, it just would lead to overtraining. So I've toned back on that. And people are like, oh, it's a biking. It's kept your, your muscles so big. Um, but I'm like, it's actually what's keeping them small. If I cut out biking, my legs would grow a lot more because then I could do that full on hard training in the gym and recover. Like I'm, I'm like walking around with like limp legs half the time from all yeah. the racing. Are you able to get your workouts in those like one hour good lifetime slots? <laughs> Those are all done. There's no time limits anymore. Oh, so really? you can go in and train. And so mm -hmm. we were locked down here for maybe seven weeks. So I just trained at home. And so I did the best I could. And I actually, I think I got bigger because my doctor prescribed, like you, you probably remember I was off of yeah. everything for seven weeks and people didn't believe it, but yeah, I was off. I was on zero and then I went to a hundred and then I went to 120. So when I went from hundred to 120, I actually grew more. Like I got back to the gym and you have that same mirror you haven't seen in like, you know, the two months. And I'm like, geez, I look bigger and leaner now. And the, the, the strength I had on the leg press, I was like, I'm up a plate on each side. So I got stronger during that seven week shutdown than I was beforehand. And I mean, it's probably just from up in the dose by 20%. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it actually brings me to another question. So I, and I wrote this down I said, how, um, yeah. Oh, what was it here? Oh, 
Oh, as you know, I'm on 120 milligrams a week of tests from 100, which resulted in just over 700 nanograms per deciliter. So that's where I'm at right now. In your opinion, would it be safe or smart for me to increase the dose to bring myself to like the thousand nanograms per deciliter? Would that increase potential health risks? You know, assuming like my blood work looks good right now, like based on your experience, like what would you say? Because like, obviously my doctor is not going to just like up the dose. That's the doses for the dose. But if I was to go to an HRT clinic, like, you know, something different, like you have the clinic, like, what would you say to someone like that? Like, I'm like, man, I want, I want more muscle. If I could be 195 instead of 192 and be healthy, is that a risk? Like, what do you think? Um, yeah. So it's kind of interesting because obviously within one thing I wanted to add at the end of the video, just because it's relevant to the topic at hand is where to get high quality care and oversight. So I talk about how critical it is to find a doctor who knows what they're talking about, how to interpret your blood work and diagnostics and make appropriate recommendations based on your individual needs and how most companies are cookie cutter and do not frankly know what they're talking about to get high quality care and oversight my clinic is accepting patients right now we have a full-time staff of doctors ready to go and we've actually been in business for you know over half a year at this point it's just we haven't had enough staff to handle the demand to be honest so i've never done a dedicated plug i just kind of mention it in passing but our website is fully functional we have a full-time staff right now and we have more doctors coming on full-time and to book a call with one of our doctors, all you have to do is click the I am interested in treatment button. And alternatively, if you just want self-service blood work, you just want to get your own labs and um, just for the sake of assessing your current health and or using that blood work in the future to potentially um, undergo hormone replacement therapy or something that may be appropriate or just assess your you know, what may require optimization or addressing with lifestyle and diet changes, click the I want to buy diagnostic labs button. You can use one of our pre-designed panels. These are panels that I've had input on as well as all of our patient care coordinators and doctors, and they're kind of designed to be the most cost efficient and or the most comprehensive for certain scenarios. Or you can create your own customized blood test panel right on our site if you only need a few individual markers or if there's something not included that you need specifically. So check that out. Link is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.